All right, let's see if I can get through today's episode without crying. You are Locked On MLB, your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about all of Major League Baseball. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. I've been a baseball podcaster for well over a decade now, and this is my sixth full season here as a host of the Locked On Podcast Network at both Locked On MLB, and this year I'm also the host of Locked On A's. So I'm doing a little bit of double duty. If you like what your pal is doing, well, you can see me twice a day, five days a week. Follows at Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter or whatever it's called now. And on Instagram, I am your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Today's episode of Locked On MLB is brought to you by Tax Network USA. Do you know it's never too late to resolve your tax issues with the IRS? Don't wait. Reduce your tax debt and get help from a team of licensed prof- tax professionals. Call 1 800 549 1000 or visit TNUSA slash locked on. And um, as you can see, I'm still in this room here. I'm decided uh, I just moments ago, I recorded yesterday's episode where I broke down at the death of Willie Mays because you know what? That's it happens. It happens. I shared a little bit of emotion. Uh, we all move on. We all move on. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, though. I'm going to do it for today's episode, which is also being dropped on uh, Juneteenth. This is probably a little later on Juneteenth. I'm going through the power rankings. I'm going through the power rankings because I didn't get a chance to do that this week. I've had to do a couple of evergreen episodes as I've been on the road a bunch. I was in upstate New York, and now I've been driving around. I'm all over the map right now. Actually, literally, I've been all over the map. And for a little bit, I was actually uh, I was in Canada for a tiny bit. So, uh, But do you know what? You'll be seeing some of that in upcoming episodes of Locked on MLB. But I've not got a chance to do the power rankings until today's episode. So... Why don't we uh, undo them right now? Because tomorrow, the episode is being dropped tomorrow. I swear we're going to be going and talking about the game in Birmingham, Alabama. I'm going to talk a little bit about that at the end of this episode as well. But we got to plow through these power rankings. And I'm telling you right here and now, um, the, the National League is such a wild scrum that as I'm recording this, there's Two playoff spots and nine teams all within a game and a half of those two playoff spots. And I'm going to be addressing something because I had one of my listeners on the previous episode saying, I owe the Mets an apology. The answer to that is no, I don't. No, I don't. Because because as I bit my tongue right there, I was right before and I'm right now. And I'll explain a little while about what I'm talking about and how things could open up that could make the Mets' life a lot easier and be able to use a Cohen and his big Scrooge McDuck pile of money, all due apologies to Jackie Cation for the reference, to fund the next great Mets team, which is currently not on the field. Um, But let's go through. We're going to go in reverse order, 30 through 1. At number 30, remain the Chicago White Sox. The White Sox, who lost six of their last 10 games, um, they remain, uh, there's a technical term that they they remain, which is uh, not good. Um, They're a mess. They're terrible. And they are soon going to be picking their team apart. They they have to sell off a bunch of players. And they've been getting a couple of decent starts from some of their young pitchers. But any veteran who has any value on that team They have to jettison. And Luis Robert Jr. is someone who could fetch something back in terms of because he's a right-handed power hitter. This is one of the reasons why if you can sell in this market, you do it because you're going to get more than you normally would. And number 25 are the Marlins. And that's really, really, did I mention, really sad seeing that this was a playoff team last year. And now after dropping 8 out of 10, they've fallen all the way to number 29. By the way, I got to remind everyone here, these aren't mine personally. I vote on them. All the lockdown hosts vote on them. 
This is the consensus of them. And but so far, hard to disagree. Marlins fallen like a rock. And this team that was so much fun last year, so exciting to watch. You know, they, yeah, they got absolutely clotheslined in the playoffs by Philadelphia, but you would think they'd be able to build upon that instead of seeing the mess that they are right now. And number 28, the only other National League team not in it. And that's the Colorado Rockies. Again, whatever whatever pieces they can sell off, whatever thing they can do, go ahead and do it, Colorado Rockies, because, uh, you know, fortunes favor the sellers. Um, and number 27 are the Oakland A's, who I cover five days a week. Yeah, they've fallen fast. They've fallen hard. Losing nine straight games will do that to you, even though they broke the, their losing streak when they came back from Kansas City. And all those walk-off losses, they lost. There was a stretch where four straight games, they had three walk-off losses in four games. That's tough to do. Um, it's a rough year in Oakland. But, you know, they're a team that has some talent and some spark. They just wind up losing a bunch of close games. And number 26, you have the Angels, who um, are now a full, you know, they're full five games of the loss column ahead of the A's at this point. The A's fans' dreams of finishing ahead of the Angels are still possibly there because the Angels should trade away anyone valuable. They stink this year, and I feel very bad for Ron Washington, who's getting his next shot of managing. But I'm convinced they can reincarnate John McGraw, Earl Weaver, or Leo DeRocher, and they couldn't manage this Angels team or any Angels team for the last 10 years to a playoff spot. And then we now we start with those are the bottom five Angels, A's, Rockies, Marlins, and White Sox. Now comes 25 through one. And in 25 through one, all of these teams in, that are National League teams have a legit shot because there's only a couple of games in between. You have the Cubs who have blown huge games. They've dropped seven out of 10. They let up all sorts of runs in extra in extra innings and in the ninth inning. And yet they're still and, and there are many games under 500, and yet they're still in it. Then you have bizarrely the Houston Astros, who I don't know what they should do at this point. Because as we'll soon see, the Rangers are stumbling about this point. And while the Mariners are putting together a big lead, they're a vulnerable club. Should the Astros sell? Or do the Astros know, hey, we're the freaking Astros. We're going to be okay. Or is this the year where the Astros finally fall on their face? And Dusty Baker checked out at the exact right time. And number 23 are the Mets. And the Mets, who have were on a big win streak, they won 8 out of 10 at one point. And my friends who are Met fans keep rubbing it in my face. They keep telling them it's time to rebuild. Time to rebuild. That's why I keep saying, trade away some of your veterans. Meanwhile, the Mets have crawled back within a game or so of a playoff spot. What are you thinking, Sully? How could you say that in June? I'm saying it because they have valuable pieces. Look, the one contract all Met fans want to get out from is Francisco Lindor, right? That was a contract, a big, long contract. Everyone cheered at the beginning. We got Lindor, we got Lindor. You all want it gone, even though he's had some big games recently. Is Lindor going to be the shortstop when things finally turn around for the Mets and they become a legit pennant contender? Not a wild card contender with a sub-500 record going into late June, but a real legit pennant contender. Do you think Lindor will do, be that player? Or do you think Lindor will be dead weight and you'd be better off using that money elsewhere? Which one is it? I think it's the latter. And I'm not a big, you know, carry the water for the owners type of person. All right. If I, you know, I'm not saying that all contracts are bad because it costs the owners something, but I do think that's a contract that if the Mets could find a way to shed, then it would behoove the Mets to then open up and keep playing more youngsters because I think they could build the great winning team. Yes, they've crawled back within a game or so of a playoff spot, but there's a lot of teams in that traffic jam. Do you take the shot at it this year? And if it falls flat, you're stuck with some of the contracts you don't want? Or 
Do you take advantage of the fact that so many teams are willing to buy and you have something to sell? And the Mets have a potential buyer for Lindor that would make sense for all sides. Listen to me, Mets fans. I want to see the Mets do well. I truly do. But I do still believe that now is the time to make a bold move. If you think I'm wrong, perhaps I am. I don't think I am. We come back, we're going to be talking about the rest of the power rankings and how many of these National League teams are sub-500 teams heading into late June and still could go to the World Series. You know, we here at Locked On MLB, we pride ourselves on getting the latest news on all of Major League Baseball, whether it's the offseason, the draft, trade deadlines, the playoffs. It's year-round. Do you know what else is year-round? Collection season. Just because tax season is over doesn't mean the IRS will stop coming after your unfiled taxes. The IRS can garnish your wages, levy your bank accounts, even seize your property. Don't let the IRS target you. Let the licensed professionals tax expert at Tax Network USA go to bat for you. Look, at, I have a lot of instances where I have to have, uh, I work for some companies that are media companies, and some of them don't necessarily take taxes out. They pay in cash or they pay in 1099s. And if I didn't have a company like Tax Network USA on my side, I could get absolutely hosed come April 15th. So they've got over 14 years experience and an A-plus rating of the Better Business Bureau. Tax Network USA has saved their clients over a billion dollars in tax debt. Whether you owe taxes, have complicated matters like I do, or finally hit that big parlay this season, you need to help file correctly, call one 800 549-1000. Visit tnusa.com slash locked on. See the link in this episode below. All right, we talked a little bit about taxes. Now let's talk about death. And you know what? I'm 52. So that means approximately one third of my life is over. And I need to have peace of mind in case something happens to me that I have life insurance to provide for my family. Policy Genius is the nation's leading online marketplace for life insurance. It saves you time and money so you can provide your family with a financial safety net starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year. That's specific for $1 million worth of coverage. Some options are 100% online and let you avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius gives you unbiased advice from licensed expert support team. They have no incentive to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance. Thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot from customers found their best fit for their needs with Policy Genius. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash MLB or click on the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. That's policygenius.com slash MLB. L.B. Hey, where is your hub for getting all of your best sports news? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channel app. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, which your team every day. All right, we're back with a slightly different angle. Uh, we left off at 22. The Detroit Tigers have dropped seven of their last 10 games. They're at number 22. They're a strange team because they're more talented than I think that they're showing any uh, indication of in an American League Central that's surprisingly competitive. And the Tigers are pretty much threatening themselves to make this a lost season if they don't turn things around quickly. Uh, the Pirates are at number 21. Uh, they're 5-5 five and five in their last 10, but they won one nothing today. They're, with Paul Skeens on the team, you know they're going to win a game every five games, and they, they could pitch really well. The Pirates are a team that look like they're going to be hanging around that last wild card spot, even if they are several games under 500. And number 20, absolutely baffling the defending World Series champions, the Texas Rangers. have had a losing record their last 10 games and are – well, they're allowing the Astros to overtake them, and they're not really posing much of a threat in the division right now. There's too much talent on that team, and with DeGrom and Scherzer possibly coming back, 
they could have a good second half. Keep an eye out for them. Talk about baffling contenders from last year. The Tampa Bay Rays are sub-500. They're at number 19. They've dropped seven of their last 10 games. And they're having trouble getting a footing in this American League wildcard race. The Reds, again, another sub-500 team, but they've had a winning record over the last uh, uh, 10 games. They lost one nothing today. They're at number 18. And they're either going to be a team that rides De La Cruz to a pennant run or they fall apart and fast. Uh, number 17, the Giants, who lost on Wednesday by one run. Oh, admit it. You thought when Solaire hit that grand slam, you thought the Giants were coming back again. They can pitch. They can hit all right. But something just isn't clicking with this team. I wonder if uh, Mr. Melvin could work his magic in the second half as just hang around the wild card chase and one of these teams will catch fire, which brings us to the Washington Nationals at number 16. Remember when they dismantled their team a couple of years ago? Well, they're starting to put things together. They won eight of their last 10 games. They're hovering right around 500 and have as good a chance as anybody of winning a wild card spot. So are the Arizona Diamondbacks at number 15, who are last year's National League champs, lest you forget who found themselves into the playoff spot and grabbed one of the wild card positions on Tuesday night. And number 14 are the St. Louis Cardinals, who have won six of the last 10, but they lost on Wednesday in a walk-off game to Miami, which is hard to do. Cardinals are one of the single most difficult teams to figure out. On the one hand, they have a ton of talent, and they have players who you think are going to, I don't know, make a run at it. And they're in second place, hovering behind Milwaukee. However, they just can't get out of their own way. They're still sub-500. And they are in a position for a wild card position, a wild card spot. But there's just nothing about this team that seems to be working on full cylinders. The San Diego Padres have split their last 10 games. They're at number 13. They fell out of a wild card spot. But I think they're going to come climbing back. There's too much talent on that squad. Talk about baffling teams. Sometimes the Toronto Blue Jays look like they should rebuild, and sometimes they look like they're going to be a wild card contender. They're at number 12, winning six of their last 10 games. The Boston Red Sox have come on strong recently. They had a good showing against the Yankees. They beat Toronto the other day. O'Neill is starting to hit the ball well, and they're starting to pick. Their pitching has been very good. I have to admit, the Red Sox, who are now above 500, are a wild card team faster than I thought they were going to be. I don't want them to be making any major moves. I don't want them to be trading any big uh, prospects or anything like that. If they get a wild card spot, this is a bonus. This is a rebuilding year. And you go into next offseason and you can build upon this solid year. Or they could fall flat on their face. Who knows? And number 10, the Twins had a really, really good week, winning seven of their last 10 games and are making a go at it, as have the Kansas City Royals at number nine, albeit they were... Well, they lost in Oakland, which is hard to do. You kind of have to try to do that. And they've fallen back to earth a little bit, but they still are a solid team, well above 500. The Atlanta Braves, who slapped around the Detroit Tigers on Wednesday, are at number eight. Yes, they have a ton of injuries, but they seem to be the kind of team that can absorb some of those big-time injuries. At number seven are the Seattle Mariners, who had a good week, winning seven out of ten, or a good you know, 10 games. They also have opened up one of the biggest leads of any of the division leaders at 10. They have a double digit lead in the division in late June. That's tough to do. And the Mariners don't seem like they fired on all cylinders yet. I still think they can make a couple of moves, but right now they seem in line to be the team to beat, especially if Houston can't get on a major run and Texas can't get out of their own way. You know, the Angels of the A's aren't going to do piddly poo. The Mariners are looking for their first division title since 2001. And number six, the Brewers keep on chugging. They've won six of the last 10 games. They're in first place in the Central. They're building up a healthy lead against St. Lou. And they look solid, rock solid. The, so, do the, so do the Cleveland Guardians, who have won, won five of their last 10 games. They still have a healthy four-and-a-half game lead over Minnesota in a very strong AL Central, a surprisingly strong AL Central. But the Guardians look solid. And that brings us to the top four. And number four, we got the L.A. Dodgers, who have won six of the last ten games, who have absorbed some big-time injuries. Mookie Betts is going to be gone for a couple of months. 
Now, I'm not one to propose trades. Therefore, I'm going to propose a trade. If I were the Mets, I would be dangling Francisco Lindor in front of the Dodgers until the cows come home. They need a middle infielder, and they've been playing Mookie Betts all over the middle infield. Now you've lost Betts, and they still need infield help. Francisco Lindor is a very talented player who could, well, how can I say this delicately, blend in with L.A. He isn't being asked to carry the Dodgers. At this point, neither is Freddie Freeman. Mookie Betts and Shohei Otani were their big stars, and someone like Teoscar Hernandez, who has in the past been able to carry teams like Toronto and was a disappointment in Seattle, he's now like the third or fourth banana. You'd ask Lindor to come in and be the fifth or sixth banana, which is a good place to be a banana. However, with Betts out, suddenly they need a new spark. And with could Lindor join the team? The reason why I bring this up again for the Mets this is an opportunity to get out from that contract and still potentially contend. They could potentially have their cake and eat it too. They can shed contracts and be a wild card contender at the same time. This is an opportunity. How many times do I have to say this? This is an opportunity for the Mets to get rid of some bad contracts and bring some young players into the fold. They are in a seller's market to take it to throw that in the dumpster for a chance at a uh, fifth or sixth spot, fifth or sixth seed in the postseason, I think is absolute madness. They have to take advantage. They could get rid of contracts they would not normally have been able to get out of. That's my take. I'm sticking with it. We get back, we're going to talk about the number three, two, and one in your power rankings. Now, everyone knows that I am a fashion plate. There's nothing I care about more than wearing the best things. Look, I'm wearing a Sacramento Solon shirt. Clearly, I'm a man of deep, deep fashion. But do you want what I do? It, seriously, it's when I do dress nicely, and I have, you know, I put on a good shirt, I put on stuff that fits me well, yeah, it's a good boost of confidence. You know, you like to, people like to look good and feel good and, you know, have a little help with our style. And I'm not necessarily a stylish guy on my own. I need a place like Stitch Fix to give me a boost. With Stitch Fix, you get a stylist who understands your style, size, and budget, and they do all the shopping for me. It's the easiest way to update my wardrobe for this season. And I just give my stylist my size, my style, my budget preferences. I order boxes when I want, and there's no subscription required. They send five just for me pieces, plus outfit recommendations and pro styling advice. I keep it works. I send back the rest. My stylish always sends the right pieces to me. Their fit is on point. It's like they 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 have a style Jedi mind trick. I don't know how they do it. They just get me right. And the stitch fix, they make it so easy. I don't like to shop for clothes. It's not for me. And they save me that time and effort. Plus, I get outfits that make me look, they make me look good. Not that that's so hard to do. But... If you don't love something, send it back. Shipping returns are always for free. Style that makes you feel as good as you look. It's the best time to get started at stitchfix.com slash MLB. You get $100 off. That's $25 off your first four fixes for a limited time only. That's stitchfix.com slash MLB for $100 off. Stitchfix.com slash MLB. Must redeem within seven days of sign up. Offer does not include kid fixes. Stitch Fix. Let's get styling. Hey, this is a reminder that Locked On has begun the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's available on the Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channel app. Okay. The top three, drum roll, please. At number three, splitting the last 10 games and uh, uh, dropping a game on uh, Wednesday afternoon would be the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, they lost a couple of tough games. They lost to Knuckleballer Waldron and San Diego. Um, Higashioka got a bases clearing triple for the uh, San Diego Padres. The other day, um, but you know Bryce Harper keeps on swinging. 
takes a lick and keeps on ticking. Got two more home runs the other day. That was all the Phillies runs, but the Phillies just look, still look good. And they got Trey Turner back. So that's like making a trade. Um, the Baltimore Orioles are coming storming back at their number two. They won eight of 10 games before losing the opening game to the New York Yankees. You know, with as well as the Yankees are playing, the fact that the Orioles are right on their tail uh, shows you how good Baltimore is, too. Now, if Baltimore loses the series, well, that shows you a little bit of why the Yankees are so good, too. But give the Orioles credit. The Orioles are taking a look at this fabulous start that the Yankees have, and they're not letting them run away with it. Yeah, the Yankees have the best record in baseball, but the Orioles are breathing down their neck. And it will take just one little slip up from the Yankees and one little winning streak from the Orioles to put the Yankees back on their heels. But that being said, I think you can then figure out, number one, is the Yankees. Yeah, they lost the series to Boston, and they dust themselves off and won the first game against Baltimore. The Yankees look great. Their pitching's phenomenal. Uh, now, what's going to happen? You have Rizzo is going to be out for a while. Uh, we're not sure how long Judge is going to be out. And they're bringing up the kid Rice. So this is going to fall on Stanton. This is going to fall on Soto. This is going to fall on Le LeMahieu. The Yankees have had everything going for them. Well, that's that's not completely true. They've lost their Cy Young Award winner. But guess who's coming back? That's right. That's right. Garrett Cole is coming back. So even if they lose uh, Judge for a little bit of time, you're going to have the Cy Young Award winner coming back to what is already a phenomenal starting rotation. So there you have it. That is your uh, power rankings. Yankees, or, uh, 1 through 10, Yankees, Orioles, Phillies, Dodgers, Guardians, Brewers, Seattle Mariners, Braves, Royals, Twins, then 11 through 20, Red Sox, Blue Jays, Padres, Cardinals, Diamondbacks, Nationals, Giants, Reds, Rays, and Rangers. And 21 through 30, Pirates, Tigers, Mets, Houston Astros, the Cubbies, the Angels, the A's, the Rocks, the Fish, and the White Sox. And those are your power rankings. And to be honest, every National League team that's not called the Marlins and the White Sox, nor the Dodgers, Brewers, Braves, or Phillies, are basically tied at this point, it's one big clump. Uh, this is being dropped. So by the, on Thursday, or on when, or wait, no, it's being dropped on Wednesday. So either way, um, the Rick Woodfield game is coming up, which is now going to be a celebration of the legacy of Willie Mays, rather than just uh, honoring Willie Mays. It's we're gonna. It's going to be in some strange ways a a baseball memorial for him and. I'm looking forward to it. I hope it's a great game between the Cardinals and the Giants. We should all watch it. And if yesterday's show is any indication, I'm going to have a box of handkerchiefs next, uh, you know, Kleenex next to me because I'm going to be a blubbering mess. Hey, I made it through this show without crying. So follow us on Lockdown and Milk Pods on Twitter and Instagram. I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Talking about the power rankings and seeing if this league could get any more cluttered. This has been Lockdown and Milk for the 20th day of June 2024, I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please, I'm begging you, call me Sully. <laughs>